All right, so today is tomorrow. Thanks to the good offices of Amazon, the new thermal protection fuses or thermal fusible links have arrived. Um, this is a nice little kit that I got that has a whole bunch of them. It has an assortment. Each of them ha comes with five in every rating, uh, which should be good for fixing other stuff in the future. So yesterday we figured out that the, uh, the thermostat, the brew group is not what we think is the biggest problem right now. We think it's this fusible link right here. Uh, and I tested that for continuity, found that it does not pass current. So we know that's a problem. There might be some other problems as well. So we're gonna replace that. Uh, I'm just getting started learning how to do this. So here's how, we, how we're gonna go. I'm just gonna clear up the work area here a little bit, get these guys out of the way so that we have a little bit more uh, flexibility looking here. Uh, of note, again, this is not plugged into the wall right now. Um, now, this is done with uh, cold soldering or cold welding. These crimp connectors are done rather than um, using a soldered joint. And I think that's partly because this is a heat sensitive component. So normally I would want to solder this, but that's not going to be a good bet here. So it turns out these little uninsulated crimp connectors are pretty hard to source locally. And I went to the local hardware store and they looked at me really funny because they did not really understand why you would be wanting uninsulated things. And what I got was this collection of different uninsulated splices that are electrical splices. And the idea is that you stick wires into them and crimp them. These guys are what's called a butt splice where you put one wire in there and one wire in there, but they don't overlap. And then you crimp each end. And the shorter ones are what's called a parallel splice. Now, I bought some of each thinking that it would be good to sort of check what was in here. I think these are parallel splices, and so that's what I'm going to try to start with. Um, and in the interest of simplicity, what I think I'm going to do, um, since there's a little bit of complication involved in, in this guy, this is a two-wire pair over here and a single wire over here, so in theory you need a different size of crimp. Uh, for each one, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to preserve these leads on the sides here and just run them into my new component. Um, I checked the length of this insulator over here and we've got a little room to maneuver and I think that's going to be easier than you know stripping these back and getting it all to fit conveniently again. So what we're going to do is we're going to nip this guy out of here and then um, cut the new component to fit, which is going to be here. And, uh, and then see how we go. So, again, everything is powered off. Get in there. Arrow pointing away from me on this component. Not that I think that's gonna matter, but uh, just to be clear. I'm gonna just check this and see if there's anything else I can find written on it now that it's a little easier to view. Nothing other than it does confirm that it's 184 centigrade. The replacement components are 185. I think that's going to be close enough. All right, so we now have this, this little connection here. What I noticed before was that this whole length of, of connector was about the same width as the top of the boiler. So it was about that long. And so what I'm going to do, the fat part needs to sit right under this bracket. And so I'm gonna just trim this guy a little bit and to help myself know where to do that, I'm just gonna use a Sharpie um, to sort of mark a little bit about where I, can, uh, where I can do that so that I'm gonna leave it a little bit long so that I can uh, not have a super long overlapping thing in here. And part of why I bought some spares was so that if I do this wrong or change my mind, I'm gonna be okay. So do this over here. There we go. All right. So I'm thinking that two of these should fit within one of the parallel splices. And they do. So, 
This is one of those cases where it would be convenient to have a third hand, but you can see that that's just about the right length there. And take one of these crimp tools, and this is a 1614 uh, crimp here. I'll just check that to be sure. Yeah. So get that lined up here. Find the non-insulated one. Uh, for 16 slash 14. Once that's in, get everything all nice and connected, which is a little bit of a balancing act. And once we're in there, old squeeze and I was taught that you should do these basically as hard as you can and then move it along do the same thing I'm in the habit of always closing my eyes when I'm doing that just in case something has to fly off yeah that's not working really well because that's Although that's crimped on there, this is not a positive connection. So I think we need the next size down. Let's see if I can get this guy off. Yeah. Okay, so we'll use the smaller size. Negative. Okay, so maybe we have to go with one of the butt splices. So this, in theory, like you, there, it's prevented from going in too far by this crimp in the center here, and then it should be possible to crimp this down uh, and get a positive connection that way. So I'm just going to start with um, doing this side of this one. Um, all right, we're back in business. Turns out I just wasn't crimping it hard enough and in enough places. But having gotten that on there, that's a good solid connection. So we'll do the same thing on the other side and we hopefully we'll be good to go. I'm going to thread this guy on there. Started and then just my mistake before was that I didn't keep crimping hard along the entire length of the uh, the crimp, so it was just like stuck in a few places. Give that a good, good firm squeeze all along its length. Yeah, that's nice and tight. Okay. Good, so now we've got this whole, it's not pretty, but it should work. Let's just make sure we actually have connection here. So I'm back on continuity mode, and there we are. We're good, both directions. So, in theory, we get this buttoned all back up and put it, uh, put it back in go mode, and we should be able to make some coffee. So I'm gonna thread this back over uh, over all of these new splices, which is a whole lot easier than it was to get it off. And I'm just checking to make sure that I'm well overlapping the insulation I am. So we're good there. All right. Um, so then we'll just back this bracket back off. 
And we got to keep the uh, keep the wide part of this thermal fuse well pressed down. So I'm just going to make sure that it's well aligned in there, and I can see it, which I can. Hold it with my finger. This doesn't have to be much more than finger tight. Actually, it probably shouldn't be much more than finger tight. Yeah, there we go. Just to make sure that's not gonna go. Uh, Good goofing around. Yep, that's good. Great. Okay, so now get these guys back on there. Check all of the connections. We should at least in theory, be good to go for making some coffee. So, um, make sure that all of the switches are off. Get this thing plugged in. Okay, so here goes power. infrared thermometer. We should see this climbing. It's already above ambient, which is good. I can hear it starting to click. So I think we're good.